I got donuts. Please. And <laughs> Pellegrino juice. This like. may be the most mediocre podcast yeah. ever. I thought, no. I said, is it in there? <laughs> and it had <laughs> knives in it. <laughs> and I said, let's go. <laughs> and then you leave just looking like a mess, yeah. but you didn't even do anything in that two hours. So, and I remember saying, no problem. I got piano fingers. That's what I said to them. <laughs> and butters, they do nothing. I was like, oh, I don't have a gun. Do you have a gun? Oh my God, I'm crying. <laughs> I think so. Jeez. How'd that go? I, that well, was I guess perfect. We'll... Seamless. Yes. <laughs> seamless we'll is exactly out. how I would have described it. Your production it. company should be Seamless Productions. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> seamless. Throw everything in the river. Yeah, trademark it now. Productions. Yeah. So bad. Oh, shit. Okay. So, <clears throat> I think I'm going to just turn this down just a tiny bit with my foot. <clears throat> You're good with that you voice. might as well just use your hand at this point. Like, what's the... Because if I, if I bend over, there's a good chance I'll just fart. And then... Oh, I thought you'd pull your back. That, that's, an all, that's equal possibility that that could happen as well. Okay, so... We're back again after a bit. We got Matt here. Yeah. Hello, going, thanks brother? guys. Thanks for having me. Matt's a home inspector. Who are you with, Matt? I'm with the Buyer's Choice Home Inspections Northeast yeah. Leduc, and pr- just recently we purchased Red Deer franchise. So oh really? Oh, wow. Yeah. Expanding. So whoa, you guys are just taking over the inspection world. Yeah, yeah. Took over Central Alberta, so that's huge for us. So yeah. that's good. How many guys you got on your squad? Uh, nine now. Oh yeah. That's yeah, so good. six up here in Edmonton, and then surrounding areas. We got a guy who specifically does like Pinoka and Cameron rolls out that way okay and then uh yeah the three red deer guys just signed on nice you, you guys run teams of two for each inspection yeah Didn't yeah we? yeah we like to do two man inspections a it's just easier for you guys in and out in an hour and a half two hours and yep. then b it's always better to have that second set of eyes every single person on our team kind of has a specific trade behind them so if you're ever in a house where you don't recognize something something plumbing related or hvac related or foundation related we're always there to kind of lend a helping hand. Yeah. What's your specialty? Well, I'm Italian from birth, so uh, I think I had a concrete trowel in my hand from out of the womb. Uh, the only reason my wedding got broken up was a concrete truck showed up and uh, everyone had to run away. Um, no, uh, yeah, I was going to say, what the fuck does pasta have to do with home inspections? <laughs> <laughs> well, those are the two reasons. We eat because we always do concrete. And we're so freaking exhausted. We need the carbs. That's fair. No, but uh, yeah, no, it had... Previous life, I was a uh, concrete place and finish. We owned a concrete plant for six, seven years. Oh. So we sold and produced concrete. And then uh, dad was looking to retire. He was getting up there in age, some health issues. So yeah. we sold everything off and I came to retire into home inspections. Nice. <laughs> Retired <laughs> into home inspections. How old are you, Matt? I'm 39 years old. 39 nice. years old and he's stepping into his retirement <laughs> job. Wow. Honestly, it's a great job. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool, man. Uh, You and I know each other from way back. Mm -hmm. Um, Just a couple of Italian guys growing up on the north end. Matt's a little younger than me. I actually grew up with your cousin, Mike. Oh, I feel uh, sorry for that. Yeah. No, I'm just joking. (laughs) Yeah, I know Mike was a really good buddy of mine. He he has a company as well. Uh, Shout out to Cap City Landscaping. Yes. We'll give him a little shout out there. But yeah, that's how... I met you is through him and obviously through soccer because yeah. we, we play a lot of soccer. We still play soccer to this day. We do something. Together. Yeah. Well, we, yeah. Playing, I guess, is a relative term. We, we run our fat asses around and try to see if we can keep up with the younger guys. Sometimes I pull my hamstring in the first five minutes and walk for the next 45. It's normally how it looks, but yeah, uh, yeah we do something out there. Yeah. There's a bunch of guys just kind of limping around like a bunch of geriatrics out there. It's probably not entertaining for anybody to watch, so... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if anybody listening wants to come out, it's Friday night. Uh, bring a book. Yeah, you'll, you'll probably yeah. enjoy that a little yeah. bit more. Listen than to this podcast. <laughs> yeah, bring this podcast up yeah. and come see two of the guys out there. It's yeah. not. It's more important. Yeah. You definitely won't enjoy yourself. <laughs> yeah. John, I've tried to invite Justin out before, but yeah. he's like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> that's a hard no. Yes, yeah, no, I'm not doing that. Yeah, he's like, can I wear my skates? I'm yeah. like, no, probably not. <laughs> Indoor soccer is like hockey for the most part. There's boards, you kick a yeah. ball in the net. It's it's basically yeah. it's more hockey than it is soccer. You realistically, there's offsides. The yeah. It sounds hot though. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>... 
It is. <laughs> it's a little warm. It's warm it's in a little there, warm. but not as bad as like um, <clears throat> ball hockey. Oh, ball yeah. hockey is the fucking worst, man. Have you guys ever played? Yeah, ball? I used to play ball, ball hockey. It's hockey awful. is brutal, man. Oh yeah, it's so hot because you're wearing all the equipment and it's like in the Indoors, little sweat yeah. box. And you're and running on like pavement or yeah. like hard surface, like constantly, like it hurts. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's what the that's what indoor soccer is basically. We played on the other Friday. We played on the new fields, oh, I've never played which it. was like it's like actual turf, so it's got oh, like nice. a little bit of give to it. It's not like like the old ones. It's just basically astroturf on concrete, yeah. and that's it. No it's cushion, no cushion at all. So like really good for the knees. Yeah. I'm feeling it now. I'm like we're yeah. talking about yeah. soccer, and I'm yeah. like, oh, I think I don't know how this knee's gonna hold up, but I think I'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah, it's brutal. On the, on my knees have been giving me lots of trouble in the last little bit, too, for some reason. But So yeah. we're going to get sponsored by uh, Metamucil. And, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> any pharmacies out there want to give us some Voltaren gel for our geriatric teens? Yeah. Come on as a sponsor. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Yeah. yeah. We're going to need adult diapers. And what other sponsors can we get for old-ass people? I don't know, yeah. man. We need it all. Fuck, we're not even that old. That's no, the problem, right? we're just like really old people are probably gonna listen to this and be like, "Fuck these guys." These like, fucking thirty-nine year olds are complaining. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> let's uh, let's roll into this bad boy right now. Um, well, Justin and I just came from Yellowed because we were talking to some of the like to the two owners yeah. of Yellowed, who you know I want to give a shout out to them right now actually real quick because like. Um, they're so cool, like so cool and so down to earth and just like, like really chill. Have you ever been there before? No. Oh, it's so it's like a little ice cream shop on White Ave, like a mom and pop shop. And they're like, they're super popular right now. Like they're just like, they've blown up on Instagram and they like their ice cream is phenomenal. But besides their ice cream, they like have like baked goods and they're doing like, coffee now. They, they have yeah. some other specialty drinks. It's a really cool vibe, yeah. too. It's, like, right in the old Dominion building. So it's, like, an old – I don't know if it was an old hotel, but it's – I think it, it was a hotel. Yeah. It might have been a hotel. Like, a really cool building there on the main floor. So you enter, and it's, like, it's it's got a cool vibe to it. It's like yeah. one of those old mom-and-pop ice cream shops. Like, yeah. back yeah. in the day where you walk in, long counter type thing. Long counter. Long but they do have cool. a fair bit of seating, probably, yeah. like, 10, 10 nice. tables and chairs. It's really cool. But ultra-modern. Like, it's really – like, they like it's really cool because you walk into this, like, really old building, and then everything is, like, super modern inside. Oh. And everything and they're just like they do like wild flavors yeah, it's hey? amazing like, yeah we had a bunch of stuff it's yeah. phenomenal a lot yeah. of it's like filipino like um like because she's filipino and he's um whatever <laughs> and uh like they're just like awesome like they're like such good people and their stuff like they gave us this score um what was, was it, it they called it like a score bite but it was yeah it was more of like a like a tart, I guess, yeah, I or something tart. like that. Yeah, they gave one to me and Justin. We were just like, this is unreal. Yeah. <laughs> like, super good. I'm but, really glad we're talking about all the yeah, fancy yeah. things you hungry? ate and the 300 yeah. pound Italian guy sitting beside you guys. It's well, like salivating. I, yeah. I just started, like, I'm getting a little bit, like, out of control right now. So I just started, like, doing, like, a 30-30-30 thing today. Mm. And I, like, we were sitting there doing this stuff for these guys, helping them with some marketing stuff. And they're like, oh, what do you guys want? Do you guys want some treats and stuff? And I'm just like, great. So, day, day one off to a great start. Yeah, day yeah. one off to a great start, exactly. There's but, always tomorrow is a day one. Yeah. Yeah. True. <laughs> so, Matt, you... um you do home inspections for a lot of realtors in the city. And uh, obviously, as a home inspector, you probably have some pretty wild stories for, like, like shit that you see happen and stuff like that in the industry. Oh, definitely. Um, yeah. Some Fire of them safe out. for work, some not safe for work, so we're going to get through them both. Uh, but you guys have all heard it. But I heard uh, Janine's podcast the other day, and she talked about squatters in the home. We've walked yeah. into that yeah. situation where... Um, we're ringing the doorbell, nobody's answering. All of a sudden, you see a freaking sliding door open in the back of the place, and a guy's like trying to sneak out the house because he broke in. And then you're trying to reach out to like the client, and you're like, "Hey, 
Um, was anybody supposed to be in your house? It's supposed to be vacant. He's in BC, so he sends his dad over to come check it out. And oh, that was an ex roommate. He stole a key. He wasn't supposed to be in the house. And basement smells like cigarettes and cat <laughs> urine. And you're trying to sit there and do an inspection while they're calling the police. Yep. So that's that's always those fun ones where you just shake your head, right? You and had a I, few of those, or oh, what? Oh yeah, I had a couple <clears throat> of those uh, squatters type situations. And that's then. weird, man. That's got to be a little bit scary too, right? Because you never know what somebody's on or what they're doing or. You you know what I mean? If they're dangerous or not? Well, we grew up on the north side, so no, I'm just joking. <laughs> I don't you can get handle scared. yourself. I'm, I'm 300 pound Italian guy. Yeah. I don't get scared too easy. Carry a switchblade <laughs> with you, I guess. Yeah. Brendan, he's only about uh, 5'9", 160 pounds on our team. Uh, he gets probably a little bit more scared than the rest of us, but yeah. uh, you no, know, I'm not too worried about that. But it's, <laughs> it is, you're right, you have to be scary because you don't know what they're on. They could easily be on drugs or yeah. something. Yeah. Like, you never know what you're walking into when you walk into a home. And totally. You guys have put yourself probably in that situation a few times where yeah. you're the first ones in knocking on the door. Hey. <laughs> yeah, Rob, Rob doesn't have too many crazy stories, I and he's been that. a realtor a lot longer. Yeah. Like, I've had a few involved people in closets and whatnot, yeah. but, like, I had one, like, I don't think I've told the story yet, but, like, it was one of my very first showings starting out on real estate. I went in a sketchy area, and we're looking around, and there's, like, reptile, uh, like, um, aquariums everywhere. I'm like, oh, this is weird. And I went to the bedroom. There's two guys cuddling on the couch or on the, on the bed. They're just cuddling there, and they didn't move. And I was like, "Hello, hello!" And I just kept saying "Hello" as knocking. They didn't budge. Like they stayed in the freaking statue. Yeah, they're just like spooning, spooning like, each other. They, yeah, were they spooning? They were spooning, awesome. and I just turned around and was like, "This isn't the place for you." And we just left. I was like, "I don't know what to do anymore." I'm like, "They're not even budging." First time, it's like yeah. we yeah. we never know what we're gonna get. We've walked in houses where family members show up and there's tons of people coming in so we did this last one and uh it was probably a couple weeks ago and uh family comes in there's like 15 people throughout the house everyone's kind of making their way through the house all of a sudden uh people are coming downstairs we have the we have the the augering guy come through it's rick with rdr camera and augering he tells me he's finished his job so the girl's like oh can i use the bathroom now that he's done i'm like sure go ahead use the bathroom and that happens point, uh, Brendan just happened to be jumping in the attic, checking out the attic space. So the girl, attic space, and the, you know those old 1100 square foot bungalows, oh, yeah, it's yeah. right outside that bathroom, right. right? So this girl goes into the bathroom and she does what she does. And uh, all of a sudden, Brendan comes downstairs about 10, 15 minutes later. And I'm like, he's just got a bad look on his face. I'm like, what's going on? And he's like, man, he's like, I don't know what that girl ate. He's like, two problems. <laughs> He's like, one, Aww. that bathroom's not vented. <laughs> There's a fan, but it's venting into the attic. The attic. Number two, Aww. she hit that fan and destroyed that thing. I'm like, Aww. so what? You're just getting like hot air, just ass smelling air yeah. just in your face? He's like, he's like, she hit that fan and I, that, that vent was three feet from me, man. He's like, I'm dying right now. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, so did you finish? He must have gone barfed in the oh, attic. Oh, that's he, so gross. He's, so, he's gross. so sick. And then she comes out, washes her hands, does her thing. And then I'm like trying to figure out which one it was because I didn't like, well, I, she asked if she could use it. I'm assuming it was that one, but it was. Uh, <laughs> it's one way to test the attic that or is... the test the vent, eh? Wow. And then you go through the report and you're like, oh, yeah, by the way, um, the attic's not, the, the fan's like, not how vented. Do you know? It's just <laughs> Oh, yeah, then you can see who turns red. <laughs> exactly, right? right? Like, just watching the facial expressions to see, like, yeah, which one of you oh, was it? Man. Yeah, and why did you eat all those burritos? 100%. <laughs> Probably. What, if she eats what I eat, then she was in trouble. But, uh, yeah. yeah, it didn't look like they were eating healthy. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> fair <laughs> Might have been some McDonald's on those. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. This is definitely by far in the, the report episode. Well, uh, seller should see doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? Yeah, yeah on the mother report, uh, the family member who ended up <laughs> emptying their bowels in the bathroom yeah. should see a physician. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that, that's in the conclusion. You yeah. to get that checked. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, he, he, oh, he, he's the he, like, he's the square, squeamish one in our group. Like spiders, like little things. Yeah. Like he gets a little bit squeamish about stuff. So yeah. it was the wrong guy to be. Really? Even though he's a plumber, he was an ex plumber. He smelt it all. Yeah, like but, deal with it. But you could tell it got to him that day. A little yeah, bit. Oh, but that's yeah. awesome. I love the fact that it was just a, like a little girl too. Yeah, just like just crushing she it. She destroyed like, that <laughs> thing, man. You knew she wow. was dying because the sewer scope was going on. She knew she could use that water. So you knew she was just holding it, yeah, right? Getting ready to yeah. just. Oh. Poor, poor man. That's crazy, man. 
Yeah. yeah. We got a few of them. Like, it's just, well, what you got to remember, like, we're coming into these, a lot of times we're coming to either other people's homes. Yeah. Like, a lot of times it's, what well, you guys deal with with rental situations. Yeah. It's always not the best That's situation. That's always the weirdest stuff. It's the hardest one, man. Yeah. So many times, like, they don't tell the renter that we're coming until morning of, and they're like, okay, can you guys, like, give us the space of the home? Like, and then you got kids in bedrooms, you got people yeah. doing things, and we're trying to do our job around them, which takes twice as long, and it's just yeah. really awkward. And yeah. I think that's that's probably one of the harder parts is in those situations. Just trying to be professional, be like, sure. "Hey, do you mind? I'm going to take a photo of this kitchen space while you're sitting here doing eating your breakfast yeah. in yeah. your underwear and your robe or whatever." <laughs> but yeah. thank you. And yeah, I've never had like a, a gross encounter like that. <laughs> I've had one though, like where the inspector, like we, I was downstairs with the client, and we we're just like chatting, doing our thing, and the inspector's doing his thing, and then all of a sudden, like in the living room. The whole ceiling starts dripping like water, <laughs> like just like you can see the the yellow and like the and it's dripping oh. like onto the fireplace, like all over, and it's growing. And I'm like, what the heck is going this on is during the inspection? During the inspection, oh my so I'm God. like, where's the inspector? And I run upstairs, and he's like sitting like on like a bed, looking at his phone. I'm like, there's water like pouring into the living room. He's like, oh, my phone stopped, and then I I, I forgot I left the sink running with any. You know, so you run the sink or, or like have the water yeah. fill up. He never pulled the plug and he went and did something else. But it was so much. It must have been running for a long time. Yeah, because they usually have an overflow. An overflow. Right? And so it kept going and going. And then I like when I realized, I'm like, he knew he did this, but he didn't tell us because when I went up there, I realized the whole floor is covered in towels. Huh. Like he had been up there He's like trying, trying to, to it. cover mm. it up. And it just like flooded and he had, yeah he had to fix it all but that was the worst i've had well it's the worst because we've all been in situations like that where you go to run a tap and you got to let the water run you look under and then there's water pouring everywhere we're not carrying towels with us but at least no. own up to it like there's been times where we use like a staging towel and we're like look we call them after like look i'm sorry i had to use your staging towels there was a huge leak we're not bringing we're not prepared for that yeah um, one instance we had where an agent was mad that we used their staging towels and we just kind of told her like, I'm sorry, we'll replace your towels. I'm like, but, but just know that it's better option than just leaving this water soaking all over your, yeah. underneath your cabinet. Yeah. I apologize. Yeah. She didn't yeah. want to hear it. I mean, it. at least you, well, I mean, at least you offered to replace them. Oh, 100%. Right? I mean, yeah. if that's like, you just, you got to do what you got to do. Right. Sometimes. Things happen, right? And, yeah. and we're not all perfect. And sometimes, like, I'm sure he made that mistake. But only up to it would have been the better way than just trying to, like, sit on a bed and worry yeah, about it. Like, like, come tell me, hey, <laughs> yeah. I screwed up. Come help me soak this up. Like, yeah. let's yeah. stop the water from dripping another floor down. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like, no, it's not like we're not going to figure this out. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there's, you know, like, there's rainfall yeah. coming. What do you think is going to happen here? You think yeah. you're going to have this all magically cleaned up in the next 15 seconds and we're just going to be like, wow, looks cleaner up here than it did before for some weird reason. Well, and then I got to call that other realtor. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, hey, we're done the inspection, but we your ceiling's destroyed. <laughs> like, <laughs> and we're not removing conditions. Yeah. <laughs> we don't. Like, yeah, we don't like this house there's now. too many problems yeah. now yeah. there's some staining in the ceiling yeah. like some major yeah. water issues going on yeah. in this place yeah you should have disclosed this before right like we, instead of wasting our 500 dollars on an inspection yeah. uh, did you tell us about all this water yeah. jeez i didn't think you guys in you guys should have seen this oh, <laughs> so weird shit <laughs> well i mean like you work so you work with a lot of realtors so like what would you say, like, you must have some shit that you think that, like, realtors or just, like, what do you have? Like, we we love asking people what their pet peeves are. So, like, do you have any, like, pet peeves in the industry? Like, things that just, like, grind your gears? Well, the funny pet peeve is, like, the Rob Corner realtor time. Uh, Ten minutes late for everything. No, I'm just joking. No, it's true. <laughs> it's not, like, it's not uh, not untrue. I'm, I'm, I am late perpetually after. I'm working on it, though. No, it's a good thing to work on. No, it's just funny because we do, like blockers three spots nine noon and three and if we do end up starting late it kind of pushes it but honest god shit happens everyone understand and we do give ourselves a half hour window so that's yeah. more of a joke than anything else but but one of the main things is it's funny like i don't know you guys have been in the situation same as us you get that phone call like a year year and a half later and it's like oh my dishwasher no longer works or my, my washing machine stopped working and you almost want to be like 
and and they're like and, and most times the agents are like well i don't know it's like well what about that home inspector so we get those phone calls like a year later like my dishwasher stopped working I'm like well you've been using it for a year and a half yeah like <laughs> it's a, it's an appliance yeah. Yeah. a they're out of scope for us realistically and b yeah. uh they're designed to fail they're designed to fail yeah. it's like a car yeah. they one every seven war- years are yeah. you a warranty company like is that what they hire oh, to it, come in and make sure that all the appliances are gonna go for the next 10 years and that leads me into that next point is people aren't really aware of what a home inspector is a lot of times and like guys like you and you you guys explain it a lot to them like yeah they're here to to look over your property make sure it's a good purchase make you aware of things you might not normally be aware of um home inspections aren't pass or fail a lot of people feel like they're past did, we always hear did it pass the inspection that's not what we're here for we're not here to pass an inspection yeah we're here to educate you on stuff that we find we're more like hey this is an issue that we found this is the type of work that's going to take to fix this issue. Is it in your realm of something you want to do or is it not in your realm of something you want to do? And that's the conversation you guys have with them. Yeah. We're just there to, to educate them and make them aware of situations. And hopefully that allows them to make uh, a decision that they're comfortable with, right? We, yeah. want, we want people love their homes. That's what we're here for. We don't want them to have surprises a year down the road. But there is no home that's perfect. Yeah. You, there never will be a home Oh, you'll that's find perfect. everything in the like brand new homes, right? You don't it's have a, a list as well, right? And But it is funny that the public still views as an inspection as a pass fail. Like that's where like, I don't like that education. It's we continue to try to educate. It's not pass or fail. It's here's your list. It's up to you if this is a red flag or not, but that's still like an ongoing thing that that just doesn't get through to people. Well, the other thing that annoys me too, is that people think that the purpose of the inspection is to nickel and dime the sellers to death. Right. And whether I have a listing, whether it's my listing or it's my buyers, that is annoying to me because like you said, there's no such thing. There's no perfect house. There's every single inspection. There's no way. Like, I think I talked to an inspector once where he said there was only one house that he's ever did in his like 47 year like term of, of inspections where there was nothing wrong. Like one house. Yeah. And he did like thousands and thousands, right? He's like, he's like, and he's like, I had to go through the inspection like twice basically to make sure that this was correct. But he's like, there's always something. Do you know what I mean? Always. And the, and if the realtor doesn't do this, so this is more of a realtor pet peeve than an inspection pet peeve because realtors need to educate their clients that the purpose of the inspection is not to go back to the, the, the seller on all these little tiny items that you find because there's going to be yeah. so many of them anyway right so it's no, you, you're not going to go back there and start tallying up like oh that that outlet was wired wrong so i need 12 bucks for that and you know what i mean like then just like making a mental tally to be like i want this money off the purchase price the point is just to educate you on buyer beer beware like what you're buying and if there are any big ticket items i mean big ticket is subjective yep. but if there are any big ticket items that you weren't aware of, that's where the conversation needs to happen. It was like, well, do we discuss this? Do we know about this? Do we, you know, do we talk about it afterwards? So that's like kind of a gray area where I think with home inspections and that's kind of like, that's, that's outside your realm of expertise, but there is an element of that with home inspectors too, that I feel like there are some of them out there that like to coach like like buyers to be like, Oh, you should, you've had, you've had this happen too, right? Like you where a home inspector has been like, Oh, you should ask for money out of that. Oh yeah. Or for back yeah. for that. Yeah. And you were like, no, no, that's not your job. Stay in your fucking lane. Yeah, like, exactly. You know I mean? Yeah. That's happened actually a few times. And I make note of like, which people that do that because like, they'll talk to your realtor and they give like me a little wink. Like yeah. you're not helping me right now. <laughs> you just like created an issue out of nothing. Yeah, right. Like, yeah. You don't know what's subjective to this person. This guy might be a plumber gas for He might sure. be able to fix a water tank without exactly. things. So why are you telling him what he needs to do or what not he not yeah. needs to do? Yeah. Um, on that point, that's exactly the situation that we walk into so many times. We have our, so you've seen that. We do our summary at the end. So at the end of our inspections, we'll take a 20-minute summary. We have a bunch of photos that we take, and we just like to go through it. And it's just to make people aware of, of things that... That, that that every house has yeah. loose toilets you might need some weather stripping on a hatch you might need this a lot of the major stuff that we always kind of deal with and it's just to put the person at ease that this is something that every home will have it's a maintenance item and then we get into our summary items where these are things that you might want to talk to your agent about not saying that you need to be done but these are some issues that we found that are a little bit more on the pressing side of things right. so you got your two or three things at the front of the report and then you kind of move on right our job is to get in get out educate 
And then you guys have to have that discussion with your client. It is sure. not our place to have our opinions on what the house is or isn't. That yeah. is not what we're there yeah. for. Yeah. And too many people in this industry feel like they're feel like they're obligated to give their opinion. Yeah. We're not, we're not. That's not our job. We're no. not. The, you don't know what situation that person's coming from. You don't know yeah. what this home means to them. You don't know where they were living before. It could be the most fabulous home in the world to them, and they might be willing to take on all those things. So you really have. Yeah. To, so like we said, like the one thing we do, twenty minutes at the end of the report, we sit down, we have our summary items, we go through all the photos of the home um, that we've taken, and we try to just kind of go through each item and just say, hey, this is this is an issue. This is this can be an issue. This isn't an issue. This is a maintenance item. We just let them know the level of what they're going to need to do. Because the other big thing is when they go home and look at that 65 page report, sometimes it's pretty daunting. So we want to get them a feeling before they leave that. Like, okay, these are the items that are under, that are, that are you're going to find in every home. Yeah. So when you look at that report later on, you're not just like, oh my God, I got to do caulking. I got to do, I got to fix uh, grading around the home. I got that loose faucet. I got that thing. And then they start to get that feeling of overwhelmingness. Yeah. But if you can just tell them like, as you're going through it, like we do see this in every home, it is a relatively minor issue. We do have to comment on it. We do have a codes of standards that we have to follow. Right. Sure. Um, so we do have to put them in, but that's why out of town buyers are so hard lately because they're not they're not coming to these inspections and they're seeing these reports yeah and they're just looking at them like oh my 65 pages yeah, long. yeah i'm not saying that there's fluff in it but there's a lot of stuff that we have to sure. put in that makes people sometimes feel overwhelmed yeah it's, it's all like home maintenance for the future too the majority of it right? yes. it's like hey this is just something to watch for and that's where i tell people i'm like if you're coming to the inspection which i highly recommend you just need to be there for that 20 minute talk mm -hmm. because that's the way you guys present the info in front of them is a lot softer than like a red yes. bolded yeah. kind of print right like that's what i was gonna say is i feel like a big part of your job is bedside manner right like i would like me and you talked about that before where i was like you know like listen <laughs> i'm gonna hire you as a home inspector but you got to know that like one of my biggest things with my clients is like is bedside manner like yeah. i don't want you scaring the shit out of them but also at the same time you need to be able to educate them on what's going on and be honest right because i don't want you hiding anything like there's a lot of realtors that will that like get pissed off when a home inspector brings up like a big ticket item because they're like oh you're blowing up my deal well fuck no that's that's your job that's literally what you're hired to do yeah your crumbling foundation <laughs> is blowing up this deal right like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but that's the honest to go yeah. truth like we do have a responsibility to our client sure. I, as much as we like to think that agents are our clients you guys aren't yeah. you're referring partners which we appreciate you guys yeah. as much as we do our our food our our client is that home is sure. that homeowner a potential yeah. homeowner yeah. and we do and we want to make sure that everybody has when somebody moves into a home they don't want to we don't want to be getting those phone calls six months later and say oh my god this happened or that happened whatever because then we know we didn't do our job so we're going to do the job to the best of our ability and hope that the agents that we work with understand that we have a job to totally. do um, like you said I find that in the beginning newer agents. They're really worried about home inspections because A, they aren't used to giving the information to their client that they need or B, when they're doing a walkthrough through a house, they might come from a different background that's not a trades background or a home background yeah. and they might not be visually able to see certain things in a home that maybe a, a more experienced home uh, realtor would find, such as let's say poly B piping or aluminum yeah. wiring, knowing certain areas of ages of home have certain issues. Um, that's kind of what one thing we're doing with our franchise, if you don't mind me just bringing this up a sure, little bit, is we're starting like a realtor education series where we're working with, everyone's about teams now and smaller brokerages. And we're going to be offering a service to these smaller brokerages where we take on, it's like an onboarding process. As part of your onboarding process with new agents or even seasoned agents, come to a house with us. We'll walk through. We'll show you problem areas. We'll show you how to find where a foundation crack might be. We'll show you where to look for poly B piping. We'll show you how to look for the age of the water heater or the furnace, whether it's high efficiency or not. Yeah. So we're going to do like a toolless walkthrough in a home with agents and kind of mm -hmm. just, you know, make it simple, have some food out, have some stuff out and just walk through a home and just try to educate agents because the more you guys are educated, the, the less likely that when we go to do the walk, the inspection, there's less surprises. Sure. Right? Yeah. I think it's huge because actually Good like when I got into real estate, like I didn't come from any type of anything to do with home background at all or in my family I'd, we, like, we don't have any trades people so I knew, I knew nothing mm -hmm. uh, it was going to home inspections even if I didn't have like the buyer I would take along or fill in for other agents and that's how I've like learned everything about houses so now when I do showings I can easily pull out hey that's 
poly B, that's aluminum wiring. Yeah. This is most likely going to come up in an inspection, blah, blah, blah. So yeah. those little educational sessions are huge because if a newer agent doesn't have somebody to follow or go to these inspections often, they're kind of not really growing. Yeah. yeah. And with there being so many small brokerages now or like these other models of brokerages where a broker is not readily available, available yeah. a lot of the stuff falls on to like team leaders or team members so that if we can get there and we can be like, hey, bring your team to us. They get less questions asked to them. They're more educated and gives you more time to do what you need to be doing as team leads or as yeah. brokers and doing other things. Um, so we're we're really ramping up that. We and it's going to be idea. more of like a yeah. winter time thing. So where do you busy. like? Where do you find the houses? Like, what kind of houses do you use? And like, what's your? Well, what we're trying to do is we'll reach out. So whatever group it is, we'll try to reach out to them. Like we have lots of agents that we talk to always have a vacant mm -hmm. home or but we'll reach out let's say we're coming to do it with your group we'll ask rob hey did anybody in your team have a vacant home from let's say 1960 1970 yeah and then you'll say oh yeah by the way we got this home okay do you can we get it for two three hours and then you supply the house to us we'll supply three or four agents with us yeah. we like to keep it like the max four to one five to one so we do have all six people on our team so we can probably do up to 20 30 people but like, and then the first guy will take the people outside and walk the foundation, talk about grading, talk about downspouts, talk about exterior cracks. The next guy will go inside. He'll talk about what kind of plumbing it is, whether it's PVC, whether it's ABS, whether it's poly B, whether mm -hmm. it's PEX. Like, and then the next guy, he can go in, you can look at the electrical system. And like I said, it's just more like... Do you guys don't do like... Do you guys go through and do like the actual report for that place or anything like that? Uh, we haven't thought about it that far. It's more just like, hey, do you guys have any questions while we're here? What, what do you... Where, where have you and your previous experiences had an issue? What don't you know? Yeah. Tell us what you don't know and we'll try to help you. Yeah. Um, we easily could do a, a pre-inspection well, at that point. I was just thinking like yeah, if you're going to... for the value of the seller. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was going to say if you're... Yeah. Like to, for the seller to do that... To refer the even the listing agent to be like, hey, yeah, we're going to give you the time to come in and and do this with this listing. You know, that'd be that'd be super beneficial to be like, hey, listen, here's a report, right? Oh yeah, because like that, even having that and sending that to a buyer, just being like, hey, we had this, the yeah. the sellers had this uh, inspection report done. You know what I mean? Like here's, you know, the buyer's probably going to do it anyway, like regardless. Yeah, just sorry. go like this and grab it and go like that. There you go. There we go. Good. Um, the buyer's gonna like get a probably get their own inspector to do a report anyway, yeah. but it can go a long way. Is just having that to be like, hey, yeah, we we did our due diligence, right? So, We'd love to do that. Yeah, if we're already there after all the agents leave, we'll be there, there for an hour for the next hour and a half. If you book up a three hour time slot, we can easily just do yeah. a pre inspection before we leave. Yeah. yeah, pre inspections are gonna be very important in a market where in a market where it starts to get flooded or interest rate. Like if you're, if you're, it's hard to explain. I like pre-inspections because A, it gives two ideas. One, the homeowner can go through and fix the little minor things that, yeah. that everybody nitpicks on. You know what I mean? Totally. Like when you have that 65 page report and it's going to scare that client, by the time we do a pre-inspection, you're going to be down to 45 pages. You're yeah. going to fix the doorstop missing. You're going to fix the little minor things. You know what I mean? And if there are any major things, you're already aware of it. You can either bring it to the attention in the listing uh, in the listing documents, or like, hey, we're listing at this price because of this issue, or whatever yeah, you want to yeah. do it. Or you can just be aware that, hey, this might be a potential thing that's coming up. Totally. Um, and and honestly, we're starting to see it more and more where pre listings are coming, and, and and then it's your discretion whether you want to disclose it or not. It's just for your eyes only. So let's say sure. you don't want to disclose that, and you just want to keep it for your own records, then you have it for your own records. Yeah, oh, it's huge. Totally. I, yeah, like the pre inspection is huge in a really like fast paced market yes. too, where people are throwing blind offers and they're trying to not get the inspection done. Well, at least you, if you have that on file, you, you're getting some type of understanding of the house. Um, but I think like for new agents, it's it's huge for like the learning curve mm -hmm. of doing these types of things because it's a confidence booster. Like when they go and show houses mm -hmm. for the next five years, whatever little tidbit they learn from that session makes them stand out to a client when you're like, Hey, that's Polly B. And they're like, Oh, look, at Justin's pretty dang smart. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And after two or three times, like you, you get to know, like how much of this is going to cost and this issue yeah. like, that's, we don't, we don't give cost estimates. We yeah. know cost estimates, yeah. but we're not going to be able to give, cause the market does change quite a bit. Right. And yeah. we don't want to be, that's not our, our place, but for you to know, Hey, it's a, bungalow it's pretty easy to pop up poly be a poly be about 4500 bucks it's yeah. good for you to know when you're negotiating side right mm -hmm. the more information you guys have the better that's the other side of it too where 
I'm in a group chat with all my agents. Like every agent that uses me, I'm in a group chat. On a daily basis, I'm getting a text message about a foundation crack or about the type of poly B or, or, yeah. or someone's looking at a boiler system and they don't understand boiler systems. Because a lot of the agents, when you come in, I've been in this industry now for just over a year. My team's been in it for over six years. We got, we got master inspectors on our team. We've done over 5,000 inspections as a group, yeah. right? But a lot of the agents I deal with are newer agents because they were starting out together. I was starting out together, so we're growing together. So as they, as they have questions, they reach out to me, and I'm yeah. able to answer them in real time. They'll, they'll be in That's a house nice. with their clients, and they'll be like, hey, what's this? And I'll say, okay, this is this. This is how it works. And then they'll be able to tell their client while they're still at the home. Yeah. Right? That's awesome to be able to have that level of communication where you've got that relationship with those agents where they can just like shoot the shit with you yeah. and, and ask you like something simple. That's really, that's really beneficial and good for you too, to be able to like actually take the time out of your day to, to do that because there's probably not a lot of people that would actually be like, you know, there's a lot of people out there that'd be like, Hey, listen, if you want my expertise, then hire me. Right. <laughs> but it's nice to be able to have somebody who will just be like, yeah, no, I'm like, we're here to help the client at the end of the day, right? We're not here. Not everything needs to be, have a dollar associated with it, right? Exactly. And there's too many, and that, that way I was, wasn't brought up that way. Um, you help people, you help as many people as you can. It'll come back in a different way. Sure. That's why me and you have talked about this. And yeah. the thing you guys are doing with Good Human is, is amazing because that's the point of life is really just to, just to help as many people as you can and hope that somehow it works out. And it always has. Totally. Let's be realistic. It, it, I've, I've, I'm, I am where I am. I'm lucky. I have a beautiful family. I got beautiful kids and my family's relatively healthy. And why? Because hopefully I helped somebody along the way and yeah. it came back to me in a good way. Yeah. So Karma's awesome. karma's helping not kick your ass. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I get it. Well, that's a good segue, actually. You mentioned good human. So... Um, <clears throat> Normally at the end of this podcast, we always like to ask somebody, we prepped you before, mm -hmm. that uh, we'd like you to nominate uh, somebody for a good human. And uh, do you have somebody that you'd like to throw out there? I actually do. It was, like I heard everyone talk, it's not easy because there's so many people in your sure. life. But there's one person and uh, he's going to hate that I'm mentioning him, which is awesome. Um, but he works with me. He's the owner of our franchise, Justin Hackenschmidt. He... Um, he has been through a lot over the last few years and his way of dealing with being through a lot is to start really giving back. Um, so he had some family ish health issues in his own personal life. Some people had cancer. He went through that process and his grandmother passed away who he was really close with and she was always into giving. So he, over this last couple years, especially he has been working with the RCF like crazy. He's been, uh, he's worked with Habitat for Humanity. We've gone together to make lunches for, for school kids and with the lunch program, which is near to dear to me and my wife's a teacher, no kids should go hungry. No kids yeah. should go cold. Yeah. It's very important. Um, he was done. He's doing this event where we got to sleep in a car on December 4th to oh, raise I money. Heard. What's that about? Ah, uh, you know what? I just got the email today. I haven't looked at it yeah. very closely. Um, I, I'll get you some more information yeah, yeah, as quickly yeah. as I can. He's that just sleep came in up. a car. Yeah. I think it's for like helps the homeless. Yeah. Uh, I think it's an event for that. Cool. So no matter, this is the yeah. thing. Anytime someone says something that's for charity, he says, yeah. Right. Um, we're putting on this golf tournament with the RCF where it's going to be a, a winter invitational. We're going to have 20 agents. We're hoping to raise over $20,000 for the RCF. Nice. Um, and he's and he's the spearhead of all this. Like he is in the middle of it. He's in the trenches. He's at Habitat Humanity three, four times like a month, like building. Oh. Like he's just. He feels that he was lucky enough to have these health issues be overcome, and his grandma's legacy, and he really wants to give back. And uh, if there's a charity in the city, and you call Justin Hackenschmidt, he'll find a way to help you, no matter what. Whether it's giving a gift card for a sponsorship item, or whether he, you need him to show up and. He was fixing plumbing at one of the at one of the houses for one of the charity events. Like they called him up and they said, "We have a plumbing issue." He grabbed this tool bag. He went and fixed the a, a sink. Like he's just always. He, this morning, right now, he's uh, we have a client who um, is a little bit short on funds, and uh, he's at her house uh, fixing toilets. And we did the home inspection, and there was a little bit of list, and he's there applying silicone for free and fixing toilets. And wow. It's just he, he get, always gives. So right. this this shout out to you, Justin. I know you're gonna hate it, but you're a good man, and uh, I'm proud of you, buddy. Oh, that's awesome. That's, oh, that, that's a perfect nomination, yeah. right? Like that's exactly, that's exactly the type what of we're people looking we're looking for. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. No, yeah, thanks. Huge for shout that. out to him. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Thanks, Justin. Appreciate it. All right. Well, I think that's uh, that's pretty good. We're sitting at 44. So mm. sweet. Let's uh, 
That's pretty good. You might I even like be it. able to might even be able episode. to split this up into two, maybe. Well, yeah, it could have been longer. We did. We could have went to sixty, but forty four is good. <laughs> good. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you guys for having me. I appreciate yeah, it. I love no, this. No, thanks. For I'm an avid me. listener. Good. Uh, <laughs> that's good. Well, thanks for listening, and thanks for telling us two of the grossest <laughs> stories that yeah. we've had in the podcast yeah, so far. Really hard for somebody so, to top that. Yeah, it's yeah, pretty sick. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're not. If there's a gross award, we're we're definitely here in the running. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's yeah. something we should yeah. start. <laughs> we should. The sickest story. Yeah, award. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna have the grossies at the end of this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, brother. Well, thanks again. Appreciate well, it. Thank yeah. you. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Peace. Bye.